In past tutorials, we have discussed basic types like int and double, as well as reference types like text and picture. Variables of these types always contain a single value. However, it is sometimes useful to have variables that can contain a list of values rather than just a single value. To do this, PCL provides types called array types. For example, each of these int variables contains a single value. In contrast, this int array contains all three of those values in a list. After these variables are created, you might visualize them like this. The myArray variable contains a list of three values. Before we talk in detail about how to create and manipulate arrays, let's walk through a quick example of how we might use them. Don't worry about understanding all the details in this example. For right now, just try to get a general sense of what's happening. Let's say you wanted to take a set of numbers and print them to the terminal, but in a random order. If you thought about the steps to accomplish that, you might consider 1. Making a list of your numbers 2. Putting those numbers in a random order and 3. Printing each number from the list to the terminal. We can use an array to hold our list of numbers. Now, we need to randomize our array. Like the other types we discussed, array types also have methods. One of these methods, shuffle, rearranges the values in the array into a random order. Now we've made a list and randomized the order. In many cases in which arrays are used, you will want to do something with each value in the array. Therefore, arrays are often used together with loops. In this case, we'll use a loop to print each of the five integers in the array to the terminal, in order. Our loop condition uses another array method called count, which returns the number of values in the array. When you run this code, you'll see the numbers 1 through 5 printed to the terminal, in a random order. If you imagine that you instead had these five values in five separate variables and you wanted to print them out in random order, you'll find that it's practically impossible to program. Now that we've seen a brief example of how arrays can be used, let's talk about how to create them. Creating an array variable is similar to creating the variables of the types we've used so far. That is, you write the type of the variable then the variable name, followed optionally by an initial value. In PCL, each array may only contain values of a fixed type, so there is no such thing as a generic array. We must always specify what type of values the array can hold. This is done by putting the value type name inside left and right angled brackets after array. For example, array int is the type name for arrays that contain integers. Next, we write the variable name. In the case of array variables, the name is followed by square brackets. The number between the square brackets is the initial size of the array, that is, the number of values contained in the array when it is created. In this example, we create an array int variable named myInts, which contains three int values. Since we haven't initialized the array with values, you might wonder what the values will be. We can see what's in the array by printing to the terminal. Although it's not mentioned in the presentation documentation currently, the terminal can print out the contents of select array types, which is sometimes useful when debugging. Running this, we see that the array contains three zeros. Presentation uses a rule that the default values in an array are zero for array int and array double, false for array bool, and empty strings for array string. 
Sometimes you will know in advance how big an array needs to be, in which case you just use that number for the size. However, you may also use any expression which results in an integer value for the array size. For example, we may use a calculation involving another variable to generate the size. Running this, we see that the initial array size is 10. Also note that 0 is a perfectly valid size for an array. Just as for other variable types, you may optionally give initial values to be placed in the array. This is done using a comma delimited list of values between curly brackets. You may have noticed that in the example we discussed at the beginning of this lesson, we also gave an initial value but did not specify a size. In cases where you provide initial values in the variable declaration, you may optionally omit the array size. Then presentation will determine the array size from the number of initial values you provide. In this example, the array was created with three values since three values were given. When you provide initial values, it is recommended that you do not also provide the size. This is because the array size and the number of initial values represent duplicate information that could get out of sync. Consider this example. The size given is 3, but there are 4 initial values given. This type of thing could happen if someone miscounts the values, or if the size or values change later and one or the other doesn't get updated. When presentation copies the values in one array to another and the arrays have different sizes, it will only copy as many values as it can. In particular, you will not receive an error. In this example, although it may be intended that four items be placed in the array, the array has size 3, so only the first three initial values were copied into the array. When we print to the terminal, we see only three values as the array size is 3. This type of error can be avoided by not giving the size. However, if you do not give initial values, then the size is required, even if the initial size should be 0. You can also create double, bool, and string arrays. Most reference types, like text and picture, can also be put into arrays. We'll discuss how to do that later. Now that we know how to create and initialize arrays, let's talk about how to access and change values in an array. You access the value stored in an array by using an index. This is done by typing the name of the array variable, followed by the index in square brackets. For example, if our array contains multiples of 10 starting with 10 and going through 50, the value 10 is the first element in the array and therefore has an index of 1. Note that in some other programming languages, the first index is actually 0, not 1. But in presentation, the first index is always 1. For example, to print the first two elements in our array to the terminal, we can do the following. Our array has five elements, so it will generate an error if we try to access an element that doesn't exist. Here we try to access element 6, even though there are only five elements, and we see an error message. 
the error message tells us that we used an index of 6 into an array of size 5. One way working with arrays differs from most variable types is that you are not accessing individual values or objects based on their name. Instead, you are using an integer index to look up a particular value in the array. This is particularly useful because any expression resulting in an int value may be used as the index, as was done in our initial example. In that example, we used our incrementing variable i to print one element at a time. The value of elements in arrays can also be changed. For example, let's change the element at index 3 to 0. This is done just as any other assignment is done by using equal sign. The second time we print to the terminal, the third value, which was 30, is now 0. In addition to changing values already in an array, values can be removed or added to an array in multiple ways. In other words, an array's size is not fixed. For example, we can add a value to the end of the array using the array add method. We can see all of the available methods for array types on the array reference page in the presentation documentation. We see here the methods we've used so far, shuffle, count, and add. Now that we've seen how to initialize an array and assign value, let's look back at our first example where we printed the numbers 1 to 5 in a random order and discuss the code in more detail. First, we create an array int variable named my numbers and initialize it with the values 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Next, we use the array method shuffle to randomize the order of elements in the my numbers variable. Finally, there is the loop. Each time through the loop, we access the ith element in the array and print it to the terminal. Notice that the until condition in the loop checks whether i is greater than my numbers count. Count is the array method that returns the size of the array. Here, the size of my numbers is 5, meaning that our code is equivalent to this. One reason to use the count method rather than hard coding the array size is because the array sizes aren't fixed. In addition, using count ensures that you don't accidentally type the wrong number and therefore loop the wrong number of times. It also ensures that if you go back to your code later and change the size of the my numbers array, you don't also have to change the loops until condition to match. Changes to array sizes are a trivial problem for very small bits of code like this, but can be problematic later when your code is more complex. We have previously discussed reference types like text and picture, and value types like int and bool. Recall that value type variables actually contain the values, while reference type variables contain references to objects of that type. You might wonder if array types are reference types or value types. In PCL, array types are value types. We can illustrate this using an example. We see that changing a value inside the array myInts does not affect the array another. This shows that array variables contain the values and not a reference to a list of values. Therefore, when we create the variable another, we create a second list of values. If we initialize it with myInts, presentation copies the values from one array to the other. Arrays are integral to programming in general, and as you will see, key to randomization of experimental stimuli. You will learn even more about arrays in future tutorials.